Can I put this sweater in the washing machine? And should I be separating my laundry by color or by fabric? And how often do I need to wash my denim? What temperature should I set on my washing machine? And what about the spin cycle? Should I tumble dry? Should I air dry, spin dry? These are all questions that you've probably asked yourself before and so have I. When I first started living on my own, I had to learn how to do my own laundry, just like everyone else. And being the fashion enthusiast that I was and still am, I wanted to make damn sure that all of my clothes would be washed properly without getting damaged or discolored, which isn't always easy when you have clothes in 12 different fabrics in all the different colors on the spectrum. So I did my research and I learned. And apparently this is a topic that many of you guys are interested in as well. So today we're gonna dive into it. We're gonna go over everything you need to know to keep your clothes in an excellent condition starting from how to sort your laundry properly to the actual washing and finishing with some of my best clothing maintenance tips so make sure you stay until the end feels good to be back by the way feels good let's get into it first step before even washing your clothes, and arguably the most important one, is to sort them. Proper sorting of your laundry is what's going to keep your whites white and your wool sweaters in excellent condition. Different people might separate their laundry in different ways, but here's what I do and what's been working for me. First, I start by sorting my clothes by fabric. So I'll make three piles, one for cottons, one for synthetics, and one for the more delicate fabrics like wool. If a synthetic fabric such as polyester or acrylic is mixed with cotton, I'll leave it in the synthetics pile, but if it's mixed with wool, I'll move it to the delicate pile. The reason I split them this way is that washing machines usually have those three main programs, cotton, synthetics, and delicates. Sometimes, depending on the brand, synthetic can also be called mixed on some washing machines, and delicate can also be labeled as hand wash. Once the clothes are sorted by fabric, I'll sort them by color. So have the whites in one pile, light colors in another pile, and dark colors in another pile. The reason you keep your whites separate is that sometimes color can transfer from one garment to another, and obviously you want to keep your whites white and not end up with a bunch of pale pink t-shirts instead of white. Although less noticeable, even the lighter pastel colors can also spill, and more importantly, the dark colors could spill on the light ones, so that's why I like to keep my lights in a separate pile from my whites and my darks. Now, I know this might seem like a bit of a hassle, dividing your clothes into nine different piles, but I don't actually have nine different laundry baskets. I just have one big basket where I put everything, and you shouldn't even have to make nine piles every time you do the laundry. Just by taking a quick glance at your laundry basket, you should be able to kind of tell what the biggest pile will be and then separate just your light cottons or just your dark synthetics for example. If by any chance you have the luxury of having two laundry baskets, I would probably put the cottons in one and then the synthetics and the delicates in the other because generally the cotton load will be the biggest one. Before you wash anything, you want to check the garment tag for any specific instructions. You especially want to look out for the water bucket symbol, which is essentially going to tell you at what temperature you can wash your garments. And if it's crossed with an X, that means it is not machine washable, and in which case it'll probably say dry clean only. So onto the actual washing now. There are three main settings you need to select on your washing machine. The program, the temperature, and the spin speed. In many cases, the program and the temperature will be selected at the same time. As a general rule of thumb, the colder the temperature, the more gentle the washing will be on the fibers, the less likely your clothes will shrink or discolor, and you will consume less electricity, which is better for the environment. But colder temperatures are also less effective at removing tough stains. So in some cases, if you're washing heavily soiled items, it can be a good idea to use a hotter temperature. As for the spin speed, spin spin speed, spin speed, say that 10 times fast. As for the spin speed, the lower the speed, the more gentle it'll be on your clothes, but they might come out slightly more wet. And the higher the speed, the less wet they will come out, but there is a higher likelihood of your clothes getting damaged. So the tougher fabrics like cotton will be able to sustain a higher spin speed than say your more delicate fabrics like wool. 
So, as for laundry detergents, I prefer using liquid detergents as opposed to tablets or powder. It's really just personal preference. I find it easier to dose with liquid and you don't get that same problem you can get with powder if the water isn't cold enough where it can leave small chunks of detergent. This is what I've been using for my laundry, but I don't want to make any proper recommendations for laundry detergents because in complete honesty, I haven't done enough research myself on the subject of laundry detergents to know exactly what the best quality ingredients should be and just what the best options are. So I'm just being honest here, but this is what I'm using. It's uh, from a brand called Ecovare. It is supposed to be cruelty free and ecological. And what I like is that you don't have to buy a new bottle every time you run out. They have these detergent dispensers you can go to where you can just fill up your old bottle and it's more sustainable, better for the environment. You will generally have three compartments to put your products. The one labeled with a single bar will be for pre-washing, which you shouldn't really need to use on a regular basis unless you're washing heavily soiled items. The one labeled with two bars will be the one you will always use for a regular wash and where you put your detergent. The third compartment labeled with a flower will be for the fabric softener, which you will generally always use a bit of with a few exceptions, which I'll talk about later in the video. Unless specified otherwise, here's how I would wash each different fabric under normal conditions. I put all of my cottons on the cotton program, obviously, generally at 30 degrees, especially the dark colors because the hotter the temperature, the more likely the colors might fade. Just so you know, 30 degrees might be labeled as cold water on some washing machines. If you have whites that are a little stained or turning grayish or yellowish, just pop them in at 40 degrees, but I wouldn't go any hotter than that and always make sure that you check the tag to see if you even can put them in at 40. As for the spin cycle, the maximum recommended spin speed that you will generally find online for cotton will be upwards of 1200. I think that's a bit high. I prefer to keep it much lower just to be on the safer side and not damage my clothes. So you don't have to do this, but I'm just telling you what I do. For lightweight cottons, I will generally put it lower at around 600. And for the more heavyweight cottons that tend to soak up more water, like denim, for example, I'll put it more around 800. Synthetic fabrics, you want to wash on the synthetic or mixed program at 30 degrees or cold on some machines with a low spin speed of 600. I would also put in the same load any garment that has a mix of synthetic fabric and cotton. The one thing you want to be careful with if you're washing workout clothes is to not use any fabric softener. The reason for that is that your workout clothes, generally made in polyester, have moisture wicking properties that serve to repel sweat and keep your body cool during exercise. But what the fabric softener does is that it coats the fabric with a waxy film and when used on workout clothes that are meant to be breathable, it's going to block those sweat wicking properties, making your active wear less effective. This is a program you will use for all of your most delicate items. This includes all of your wool pieces, your summer linens, potentially silks if they're machine washable. You really want to be checking the tags here because a lot of delicate fabrics like cashmere are not meant to be machine washable, even some of your wool or silk pieces. For example, a lot of suits are made out of wool and are not meant to be machine washed. In addition to all of the naturally delicate fabrics, I will also put anything that looks fragile, even if it's not wool. For example, if I have a chunky knit that looks like wool but is actually polyester, I will put it in the delicate program. If you check the tags and verify that everything can be put in the machine safely, you want to set the temperature on cold. The cold setting for delicates will generally be colder than for the other programs, so you should be able to go down to 20 degrees. The spin speed should be set on the lowest setting possible, which is generally 400 or 600 depending on the machines. Some items may not be appropriate to wash in a washing machine and will need to be dry cleaned instead, in which case it'll say on the tag. These tend to be all of your cashmeres, your suits, silk pocket squares and scarves, and many of your winter jackets and coats. Pro tip, when washing your delicate garments or anything you want to be extra cautious with, turn them inside out before putting them in a machine. I do this with all of my denim and my knits. Another trick you can do for your sweaters in order to minimize the amount of lint that gets on them is to ball them up and put them in a laundry net. That's going to cut down the amount of friction with other items, which is in turn going to reduce the amount of lint created and better protect your delicate knits. Alright, 
drying. Let's talk about the drying. I know a lot of people like to tumble dry. It's quick, it's practical, it's efficient. You can wear your clothes or store them straight away. But I don't tumble dry. I don't know if this is an unpopular thing, but here are a couple of reasons why I don't like to tumble dry. It can damage the fibers of your clothes, the heat can shrink your clothes, and it consumes more energy, which makes for a more expensive electricity bill at the end of the month, which no one wants, and it also doesn't help the environment. What I simply do is I spin dry everything on the settings mentioned previously, and then I just leave everything to air dry on a drying rack. I can usually just come back the next day and everything will be nice and dry. If you prefer to tumble dry, that's fine. It's totally up to you. But I do think even in that case, you should make an exception for your delicate fabrics because tumble dryers can be very rough. And if you want your precious wool sweaters to last, they should not see the inside of a tumble dryer. On the same token, when air drying your delicate knitwear, you should lay those pieces as flat as possible so that the garment doesn't stretch with the weight of the water dragging it down, which would happen if you hung it vertically. For the rest of my clothing, the amount of horizontal space I give to each piece is more or less proportionate to the weight of each garment, if that makes sense. So I'll hang t-shirts on a single bar, sweatshirts on two bars, and jeans on three. Alright, so now you know how to sort your laundry like a pro, how to wash your clothes in the correct settings to not get any shrinkage or damage or discoloring or anything, and how to get everything dried up looking nice and clean. But I want to finish off with a couple of maintenance tips and tricks that I learned over the years that can help you keep your clothes in excellent condition. Some of it is stuff that you can actually do and put into practice, and some of it is just things you need to be mindful of, be aware of when doing all of your washing. Number one is to not wash your clothes too frequently. Most of your clothes probably doesn't need to be washed as often as you think. I mean, the stuff that's super close to your body, like your t-shirts and your underwear, does need to be washed and everywhere. Or sometimes, if you didn't sweat too much and you just wore it really quickly, like an hour or two, you can probably get away with washing it every other time. So that's fine. But the stuff that's not in close proximity to your body, like your sweatshirts, your sweaters, even your denim, or just like your jackets and coats, that definitely does not need to be washed every time you wear them. Your cotton pants, like your chinos, you can probably get away with washing every three to four or even five wears, I would say. So if you're wearing them every day of the week, obviously once a week will be good. But if you have a good solid rotation and you're wearing different pants each time, you can probably wash them like once a month or something, like every four to five wears. Your sweatshirts, sweaters, and hoodies, like if you're not working out in them, if you're not sweating a lot, you can get away with washing them every four or five or six wears. As for your jackets and coats, the last outer layer you're gonna put on top of you, that, I mean, some of it doesn't even need to be washed, to be honest. Like on some jackets, you'll look at the tag, it'll say, do not wash. So truth be told, I actually have jackets that I've never washed and they are perfectly clean. They don't smell or anything and they look great. If they do get stained or something, just bring them to the dry cleaner and they'll get that taken care of. Lastly, for your denim, I mean, some denim enthusiasts say you should never wash them. That's probably a bit too hardcore for me. I do think you should wash your denim every once in a while. But if it's not, if it doesn't smell, like if there's no stains on it, if it looks clean and it smells clean, I think it's clean. So yeah, my denim, I'll probably wear it like seven or eight times before washing it. So don't wash your clothes too frequently. It's gonna prolong the lifespan of each one of your garments. It's gonna help the fibers of the clothes stay protected and not get damaged. And it's also gonna be better for the environment because you're gonna consume less energy. Your electricity bill is gonna be cheaper. It's all a win-win-win for everyone. You, your clothes, your wallet, and the environment. Number two, more detergent does not necessarily mean a better wash. If you use too much laundry detergent, what can happen is that the detergent's not gonna get cleaned away, it's not gonna get rinsed away properly, and then it's gonna stay stuck to your garments, and then it can stiffen up the fabrics. So simply use the recommended amount of detergent for the size of the load you're putting in the washing machine. Just look at the back of the packaging of your detergent, and you're gonna have all the information for that. Number three, I already said that earlier, but I'm gonna quickly go over it. Wash your clothes inside out. Everything that you wanna be extra careful with, your delicate fabrics and stuff, just turn them inside out and put them in the washing machine that way. And if you want to be even more careful, use a laundry net. Turn them inside out, ball them up in a laundry net, and then just put them in that way. 
Number four, when it comes to storing your clothes, you wanna hang your shirts, your jackets and coats, but you wanna fold your t-shirts and your sweaters. That includes your sweatshirts, your hoodies, etc. That's generally going to be the most efficient way to store your clothes, both in terms of time and saving space in your wardrobe. And also for your knitwear, if you hang those, they can actually get damaged just with the weight of the fabric pulling down with the gravity. So you really wanna fold your knitwear, otherwise the shape of the garment might change over time if you keep hanging them over and over again. Number five, use a fabric shaver. This little thing right here is a lifesaver. Once I started using these on my sweaters, it changed my whole game. I mean, you know how as your sweaters age, they start to form lint, they start to pill and creating these little fuzz balls on top of them where they look kind of old and saggy. This thing actually helps remove the pilling from your sweaters and bring life back, renew the life into your old sweaters and make them look all fresh, new and clean. So it's super simple, you just take the cap off and then you just shave it like that. And then you remove the pilling and then your sweaters look brand new. I've had sweaters that are like five years old and then just use this little thing on them, have one good thorough cleaning and then they look brand new. So get yourself one of those. I'll link this one in the description. It's just one I got from Amazon, it's from Philips. And uh, yeah, it's super practical. Definitely check it out. Number six, 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 number six. Iron on the correct temperature. Just like you should wash your different clothing on different temperatures, you should also iron on different temperatures. When you check the garment tag, both of these will say, do you have the water bucket symbol? Okay, so we already talked about it. You have the water bucket symbol that's gonna tell you the temperature at which you should wash your clothes. And then you have the iron symbol, obviously, that's going to tell you the temperature at which you should iron your clothing. It might say a number, or oftentimes it might also have one, two, or three dots inside the iron symbol. And the one dot stands for the coolest temperature, the two dots stand for a medium, and the three dots stand for a hot temperature. And lastly, number seven, when you're ironing polyester or a delicate fabric, you should use a protective cloth in between your iron and the piece of clothing. Let me show you what that looks like. So this is a protective cloth for your ironing. So you just use that in between the iron and the fabric. So it's super useful for anything delicate, basically. The reason you use it for polyester is that if you don't, if you put the iron in direct contact, the heat of the iron, with the garment, it can create shine and it can damage the fabric because polyester, I mean, it's plastic. So with the heat, it can melt. I had that happen once where I had a pair of pants that I didn't know was in polyester. And then when I ironed it, it actually created like, it left like shiny marks on top of it that still to this day, I can't get out of. And for obvious reasons, if you're ironing cashmere or silk or wool, anything that's super delicate, you want to use that to be careful with because the heat can really fuck up the garments. Oop, sorry. PG-13, the heat can really mess up the garment. <laughs> All right, hope you learned something new, guys. This video was a highly requested topic and I couldn't really find one on YouTube with the information I laid out here. And this really is the stuff that I would have wanted to know when I first started taking care of my clothes by myself. So I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Give it a like, subscribe if you're new here, share it with a friend, share it on social. Love you guys and I wish you an amazing day. I will see you in the next one. Peace. Hold up, hold up, the video isn't finished yet. I have one more thing for you guys. Yes, I am in my PJs recording this on my phone at 1 a.m., but I have a gift for you. I made a Tim De Saint laundry cheat sheet for you guys, recapping everything we talked about in the video in one simple, straightforward page that you can print or save on your computer to have it handy whenever you need it. The link to download it is in the description. That's it, have an awesome day, morning, afternoon, night. It's definitely good night for me. I'll see you guys later.